Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I am a licensed psychologist here in Georgia and it is time for the tea. Tea Time with Dr. Tarver is a wellness-based podcast. It is not intended to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health provider. So here we are moving on along in February and as you know we are discussing all things relationships this month. We talked about the do's and don'ts of dating and then we talked about how to know when to end a relationship and this week we're actually going to talk about as we have celebrated a variety of things in this week including Black Love Day, Valentine's Day, Single Awareness Day. We're going to be talking about what are some of the reasons why people may be single and how you can live your best life as a single person. So you heard me mention mention Single Awareness Day. Uh, Some people call it Single Appreciation Day. And you may be thinking, what is that? Well, it is typically celebrated the day after Valentine's Day. And it was actually created, believe it or not, in 2001. It is accredited to Dustin Barnes. He was still in high school at the time. And so him and his friends decided to get together. And instead of being jaded and upset about not having romantic partners that year they decided to hey let's celebrate each other Uh, and so he actually took that on to um, I think it was Mississippi State he went to and continued it on in college it actually took off and became something that college students would do to be able to celebrate themselves. They would do things with friends, have parties, give each other gifts, maybe go out to eat. And then it was officially copyrighted in 2005. And so right now we are still celebrating it today. It got a a lot of awareness this year, last year, there were a lot of posts related to Single Awareness Day. It is estimated that about half of the United States population is single. So as you can see, People may have a vested interest in actually celebrating this day of single awareness. However, I will say that any day that you are dedicated and committed to being healthy is an everyday kind of day activity and should be celebrated all throughout the year. However, let's go ahead and get into it. Single does not mean dissatisfied or undesirable. So people often hear this dreaded question, well, why are you single? It raises the hairs on the back of necks. It makes people cringe. It allows eyes to roll. It gives people that snap look of, did you really ask me that? And oftentimes we equate single with some negative thing like, oh, single is a punishment or single is because you're unable to have a relationship with anyone. Something must be wrong with you. Why isn't anybody wanting to date you? Are there some red flags I don't want uh, that I need to be aware of that I'm that I don't know anything about? And I do want to encourage us to think about the variety of reasons why people may actually one choose to be single or two may be single currently. And so I'm going to talk about a variety of those things first and then we'll get into how you can celebrate if you are single. Um, in ways that nurture yourself and your soul because that's what the day is all about. So past hurts. We know that if you have ever been in a relationship with anyone that has hurt you, it is going to leave some scars. You may not trust people. You may be suspicious of people. It may interfere with you thinking that you have the ability to actually make good decisions about people. And so oftentimes those scars are what cause us not to be in relationships. And it could be from parents. It could be from friends or other loved ones. It may have been from church. It might have been from co-workers. Whatever the cause of that hurt, it lingers in our spirits. And it, it makes us scared to want to be in a relationship with someone again. That leads to those unhealthy relationship patterns. Oftentimes, when we have been hurt, especially early on in our lives, We tend to do what? You have heard me talk about this before. Now I am recreating these patterns in my life and I am choosing people 
who are going to continue to hurt me. Some of us recognize I don't do the best job of picking partners. If I look at my relationships, they are all very similar. I pick the same types of people over and over again. And to be clear, most of us have a type. Your type may be based on intellect, stimulation in conversation. It may be humor. You may just like a certain look in people. You may like people tall. You may like them short. You may like them thin. You may like them a little thicker. But we all have a pattern. Unfortunately, sometimes what ends up happening in those patterns is that we don't get a lot of diversity in terms of the type of people that we end up dating. So, If I have chronically picked people who cannot be emotionally available to me, then I'm going to keep picking people who are like that. And what I'm going to do, because it's unconscious oftentimes, and I want to be clear about that, we're not trying to set out to hurt ourselves. But because we're in this pattern, we don't realize oftentimes that we are. We are thinking, guess what? This person is going to show up and do the same thing. I don't trust people anymore. There's not good people out there for me to get involved with. Why bother? Right. And so we end up rejecting potential for relationships because of past hurts. And we also tend to blame the person instead of recognizing like, oh, wait, I keep choosing this same type of person over and over again. And and the reality is some of us do struggle with being alone and so we we will pick someone just to have in our lives because we don't want to be alone and then again that cycle happens and they're doing the same thing as the other past relationships did whether that's not being faithful in the relationship or not being an effective communicator being violent or abusive in the relationship being someone who is dismissive and critical and and then Again, we're seeing it, but it's almost like we feel powerless in our ability to make a different choice. So sometimes we're single because we're just on that constant roller coaster of being in and out of relationships with people who are unhealthy. Other times we just want to take some time away to focus on ourselves. So I may have recognized my pattern of choosing people who are unhealthy. I may have recognized that I'm still dealing with past hurts and I'm taking those hurts into new relationships and I'm causing those relationships to end because I'm not trustful, um, because I'm suspicious of you, because I'm questioning you. And as we discussed in the do's and don'ts of dating relationships, no one likes to be constantly questioned and feel like they're being interrogated, feel like they're not trusted, particularly when they are not doing anything that will warrant that mistrust. When we take that time to focus on ourselves, we are deliberately, intentionally saying, I'm not in a position right now to date. There are some things, here comes the plug for therapy. There are some things that I need to work on within myself before I take on another dating relationship. And that is an absolute healthy reason to be single because you are recognizing there is work that you need to do. You may be at a point in your life where you need to reflect on yourself and invest in yourself. There may be have, may have been things you put off because sometimes when we're in relationships, we tend to be a bit more other focused. And so we may not do some of the things that we want to do to invest in ourselves because we're working on nurturing this relationship. And so we'll put ourselves on the back burner, particularly if you already have a history of being kind of a caregiver in relationships anyway and taking care of other people being other focused. So this is a time where you're deciding I'm going to come first right now. I want to invest in myself. I haven't done that. There are goals that I haven't accomplished, things that I haven't reached that I've been putting off for years now. I wanted to be further along in my career. There were steps that I did not take because maybe somebody I was dating wasn't supportive of those things. Or again, I was supporting them and felt like, okay, well, then it'll be my turn. And it just didn't get a chance to be my turn. Some people purge each year. They're literally looking at the relationships that they have in their lives and thinking about, is this relationship healthy for me? Is this person adding anything of substance to my life? Looking at the value of this person in terms of our level of investment in them. We may be trying to reset spiritually. We might be trying to reset financially. We might be doing more meditation and mindfulness and really wanting to reflect on ourselves. And because of that reset, we're deciding to take a break from dating. 
So it's a conscious choice because it's healthy for us to have moments in our lives where we do purge, right? We talked about letting go of relationship, knowing when it's time. Sometimes I need to purge some things in my life and really take a look at what is the energy I'm putting out and what is the energy I'm bringing in. And if it's not balanced and I'm recognizing that I'm pouring more into other people and other things and not investing myself, then that may be a reason why I'm choosing to be single. Having other priorities, right? So some of you are in situations where you have young children. Some of you are in situations where you've just launched a career. You may be in a situation where you've been promoted to a high level position that requires a lot of time, effort, and energy. You may have launched something in your community and it's taking time investing that you're needing. You may be working on an album right now. You may be working on a book right now. You may be building your business, your empire right now. And so you're recognizing that you get distracted when you have too many things going on and that you cannot give full time and attention in the way that a person would deserve in a relationship. So you may be saying, right now my priority isn't being in a relationship. It's launching these things, getting these things off the ground, off the ground, solidifying some of the things that I'm doing. And so because I'm mindful of that, it does take time to build and nurture a relationship. I wouldn't want to put a person in that situation. You'll hear a lot of people say their relationships ended because they were so busy Um, taking care of other things they neglected their partnership so if I know I'm in that space that season in my life where I'm building then I may want to say let me wait and then this is not an excuse because I know sometimes we can use work as an excuse we've talked about how anything can turn into an addiction and so sometimes that'll be a block right so I'm trying to protect myself from getting hurt going back to the hurt piece and so I'm using things to stop me from having to engage with people I'm filling up all my time So I don't have to worry about getting involved with anybody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a deliberate choice to recognize where you are and what your priorities are in this moment and making sure you adequately give to those things before you add something else to your life. And that's being reasonable and responsible, right? Being thoughtful about, okay, what can I invest? How can I really be present with someone other than myself or my kids or my business or whatever it is that I'm doing right now? And if the answer is I really can't, then I may, again, choose to take a step away from dating while I'm focusing on those things. Enjoying the flexibility of being single. Everybody does not, I know, newsflash, everybody does not want to be married. Everyone does not want to be in a committed relationship. Some people just enjoy the dating. It gives them flexibility. They don't have to worry about being in a a serious committed relationship so that they're available on a schedule that works for them. May like the variety of being able to date different people and get different needs met. They may like the opportunity to, like this person stimulates me intellectually. This person is a great person to go to a concert with. This person is a person I really like to cook with. They're always exposing me to new things. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can absolutely be in consensual, non-monogamous interactions with people. I'm just dating and enjoying myself. The goal is we just want to make sure we're communicating that with people so they don't think we're in a serious committed relationship when we're not. So, yeah, absolutely. You get a chance to not have that pressure and not have that stress while you allow yourself to have that flexibility. And this is sometimes what people will choose to do when they do have a lot of things going on in their lives and they know they can't really fully commit to anything significant. But hey, when I'm afraid available and you're available, let's spend some time together. And that that's what works for them. And so some people who are in a situation where they don't want to get married, this is an ideal for them because, hey, I can just enjoy myself for the time that we have. We know that people come in and out of our lives for for different seasons and different reasons. And so this takes stress off me, takes stress off of them. And we can enjoy ourselves and just be present in the moment of enjoying whatever it is that we have. Some people are not in relationships because they have a fear of intimacy. We recognize that there are a lot of ways that we learn or don't learn to attach early on in our lives. So if you have parents who um, starved you of love and time and attention and support or or caregivers who were abusive to you or caregivers who um, you did not know when you would see them, they dropped you off in different places. You just had a lot of instability, may have been problems with shelter or, or, or food, um, even transportation or switching schools a lot. 
and it may just have gotten you to a point where you have difficulty being close to people. You just don't feel secure in those relationships. You don't want to be lonely, but at the same time, being close to somebody, being transparent, having this person in your space, like it makes you absolutely uncomfortable. Like you want to crawl out of your skin uncomfortable. And so these things may have come out of being hurt, but they may have come from other personality dynamics and other characteristics that shape us in who we are. But whatever the reason we're uncomfortable with being able to be that close to someone. It's hard for us to open up. It's hard for us to be present for long periods of time. And when you are recognizing that you have a fear of intimacy, you will see a pattern where you get close to people or a certain level of closeness. Your level of closeness may not look the same as someone else's. And then you start backing away or you start pushing them away. You start creating things to put space between you and that person. And that's an indicator, again, for the therapy piece, I probably am not in a position where I need to be dating right now because it is hard for me to connect so to someone. And even though I desire it, and sometimes people will say, well, I just need to find the right person and I'll be able to connect to them. That's not going to be the issue. It's not the person. It's whatever this foundation has been laid that is causing you to fear this intimate connection to someone else that's causing you this discomfort. That's the issue that needs to be addressed, not the person. Low self-worth is a big one I see. People just do not feel like they are deserving of being in a relationship. It may be that you are not comfortable in your skin right now at this point in your life. It may be an issue related to weight. It may be an accident that happened and now you don't have the same kind of abilities that you had before. It could be the way that you've aged over the years um, and, and you're not feeling as desirable. It might be that there have been changes in your your ability to get out and do things. Your financial stability may have changed. And so you don't feel like you can date because you don't feel like you have the resources to date. And because of that low self-worth, we'll do a couple of things. One will crave being with someone to fill that void and that hole. And it'll end up being someone that's unhealthy for us. And then we'll be in that cycle of the unhealthy relationship patterns again. So I'm picking people that are going to use me or abuse me in some kind of way, not validate me, not treat me in the way that I deserve. Those relationships are gonna, going to ultimately end. Or I'm going to go in the other direction and I'm going to be critical of other people. I'm going to be negative all the time because I don't feel good about me. And so I'm going to start attacking other people because at the end of the day, I don't feel like I can get anyone and I deserve anyone anyway. So I might as well go ahead and and, uh, it's kind of self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Let's go ahead and sabotage this before it even has a chance for someone to reject me, right? Because ultimately, this is some of the fear that we have is is being rejected by people. So if I don't put myself out there, I can't be rejected. Unrealistic expectations of dating. I've talked to you all before about dating plan, how you want to date, who you want to date, what platforms you want, all of these things that are important, your values, that your non-negotiables, your things that you're flexible on for a reason, because oftentimes we have this very idealized, romanticized view of what dating should look like. You think you're going to be swept off your feet. You think that you and this person are never going to have an argument. If this is the one, um, this person is going to have every characteristic that you like, which oftentimes are unrealistic characteristics. We want people to be um, financially uh, millionaires. We want them to be able to cook like chefs. We want them to be able to have the body of of goddesses and gods. We want them to be able um, to do all the yard work as well as the inside of the house, as well as meet all of our sexual needs, as well as be able to recognize what we need emotionally and be pre- like we you just not going to find somebody that has every last one of those characteristics. And so because there is no perfect person, but we're out here looking for that perfect person, we're single because no one is is going to ever reach that bar on the other end of that spectrum we end up not thinking that someone is going to be good enough um, and so we're overlooking people who could be potential good candidates for us because they're not the shiny bobble right they're not that that person that um, has the gift of uh, gab we like the person who can command a room but we don't recognize what that comes with We like that person who dresses flawlessly, but we don't realize that that means that they could potentially be attending more to themselves and not attending to me. We like this person who can uh, navigate through all of these social situations, except for now I'm feeling lonely because you're out here talking to other people and you're not talking to me. 
right? So it's important for us to really look at some of these false narratives that we may have. And this even goes back to the end of the spectrum where we're thinking people aren't trustworthy. I'll never be able to find a good person. Um, there's nobody out there anymore uh, that's good to date. Like all of these people, we like to say people are built different. They don't make them like that anymore. And all of these reasons that, again, set us up for failure because we're looking for some unrealistic standard of who a person would be. And then we are so fearful of settling that we don't end up dating anyone or we date people who meet most of this unrealistic standard and realize we don't even like that person because we don't like the things that come along comes along with all of those uh, attributes that we thought we wanted. Right. And so if it's if you're finding that you're being picky um, and not picky in having a standard, because I want all of us goes back to the dating plan to have a standard. What are my non negotiables the things that I have not the not the vanity portion because all of us can be a little vain but the absolute standards that I want someone to have in terms of their morals and their values and their ability to be able to manage things cope with stress be able to open up and talk through things communicate all of those those kind of things right those are the non-negotiable kind of things and so I'm you know, thinking that no one is out there for me when there are people that are out there for me, but I'm not paying attention to them. So again, I'm setting myself up for this unrealistic uh, dynamic and I end up getting with people who who uh, are, are convenient or, or shiny or on the other end of the spectrum. Well, since nobody can meet up to that expectation, let me just date this, this person who doesn't meet any of those expectations. And then I'm in a situation that confirms what I was already believing, which is like, oh, there are no good options out there for me um, when I'm setting myself up for failure from, from the jump. Actually, one of the main reasons why people are single is because we tend to have healthier habits when we are single. We exercise, right? Because here's the thing about when you're in a relationship, you start getting comfortable. And this is why people say, oh, you must be doing really well in your relationship. You must be happy because you put on some weight. When we are single, because we are investing more in ourselves, we tend to eat healthier. So we're eating healthier, we're exercising, which means we're having less medical issues, less physical issues. We're making time for things, so we're happier. We've got more joy because we're choosing to do things. We don't feel obligated to do things. Yeah, you know what? I feel like Mexican tonight. All right, to Mexican we go, right? And so there's not all of these things that end up causing us challenges. We tend to have um, less debt. Uh, when we're single, we tend to be more self-sufficient when we're when we're single. As we talked about, we can get codependent in relationships and get to a point where so you're so used to people taking care of things for you, then you forget how to do them on your own or you don't feel as comfortable doing them on your own. We tend to have healthier friendships with people that last longer because we tend to be more socially engaged, right? So if I'm not in a relationship with someone, that means I have to get out there and interact with my friends or my coworkers or my church members. Um, we're more likely to do things uh, that that have, you know, low risk, but maybe something that's like, eh, you know, that's outside of my comfort zone, but hey, I'll try it, right? So we tend to be a little bit more adventurous when we're single. So there are some reasons why people recognize, like, actually, I do better when I'm not in a relationship. I follow my goals. I'm more consistent when I'm not in a relationship. I, I show up as a better person for my friends when I'm not in a relationship. Um, I'm more creative when I'm not in a relationship. And so people are just recognizing, and this is that, again, I know it, it shocks some of you why some people don't want to get married or don't necessarily feel like they need to be in a romantic relationship because they feel fulfilled in the other relationships they have in their lives. They have meaningful social interactions with people. They have a good spiritual life. They have so you have all of these things that are allowing you to feel fulfilled so you don't necessarily have to have a romantic relationship in order for you to feel like you have worth right so that is one of the misperceptions that people have it's like oh I have to wait to start living uh until I get in this relationship with with this you know this dream person of mine no live now enjoy life now because you want whoever comes into your life to compliment you in that you already have yourself established as a person and you have these things um, so they don't come into a person who's waiting on them to be fulfilled they come to a person that's already fulfilled so if you are in a position that you're single for whatever reason those I listed and some that I, I have not 
there are ways for you to celebrate your singleness. There are ways for you to validate and empower and encourage yourself. And here are some ways to show up and celebrate you. This is not an exhaustive list, but some of my favorite. Um, yeah, have a self-care day. Some people like the spa. Some people want to go camping, hiking. Some people uh, end up wanting to, to go try a restaurant they haven't tried. Uh, whatever you want to choose to do, you may pray, meditate, whatever you want to choose to do in your self-care day. But take that day and just really pour into yourself and focus on you and why you're an amazing person. Write yourself a love letter. Um, send yourself some flowers or get something that's beautiful around you. We like so many things. Some of you like decorative things, pillows and curtains and all of that. Some of you like artwork. So celebrate yourself in that way. You can have um, opportunities to spend with friends or coworkers or, or church members or, or members of your community organizations. You all can go do art together. You can have a game night. You can have people over for a movie night or a dance party. You can um, go to a destination and travel, enjoy yourself. You can do that by yourself or with people, however you want to do. You can video chat with people. You can create a YouTube or a TikTok about all of these um, fun things that you're doing, all of the things that you're learning about yourself, sharing with people. You can start a group like, hey, let's walk together, or, um, let's dance together, or let's do art together, let's sing together. You can go take some lessons. I like taking classes. It might be a cooking class. You might be doing some singing lessons. I always wanted to play the guitar. You may want to go take you some guitar lessons. I've always wanted to learn how to braid hair. You can do those kind of things. So whatever it is that you feel like, hey, at some point in my life, I was interested in these things. I never did anything with it. Well, now is your opportunity to be able to do that. Create a list of things. That could be a list of restaurants. That could be a list of movies. It could be a list of books you want to read. It could be a list of um, places that you want to visit. Create that list and Every month or every couple of weeks, take something off that list. Now, you can't go to Paris every, well, you could. I'm not in your wallet. Uh, you do whatever you have been blessed to do. But, you know, you may want to have some big things that you do once a year or quarterly or every couple of years. And then, you know, weekly or every other week, then you do some of the smaller things on your list. Um, create a self-empowerment playlist. We all like a good song. I know that you all enjoyed the Super Bowl halftime show because it was an homage to the 90s. And so, so many people relived that period of their lives, but also how we're connected to music because so many people like music from the 90s, no matter how old they are. I even saw little kids um, um, dancing. You can go and enjoy nature, whether that's parks or botanical gardens, lakes that are really beautiful. Um, some of you may, hey, I wanted to skydive and I haven't done it. Or I want to bungee jump and I haven't done it. I want to learn how to fly a plane and I haven't done it. Take a road trip where you just like, let's pull out the map. How many of you all have, have taken out an actual old school map and just like, hey, Let's see where this place is. This is something that's on the, the list of, of sites that people really enjoy. Let's check it out. Compliment people. Just go out and, and, and hey, you see people and don't be afraid to give somebody a compliment. If they've got a great smile or you like their hair or their shoes or they've got on a snazzy blazer, then give them a compliment. You want to get out there and you, you're feeling particularly fine. You want to do a little flirt. You can do that as well without any, any strings attached. Just this is what I'm feeling and allow myself to do whatever I'm feeling in that moment. Do what you haven't done because someone stopped you from doing it said you don't want to do that you don't know how to do that that wouldn't be a good idea why would you want to do that I'm not interested in that or because you didn't feel like you fully invested in yourself because you were doing things that other people like do do those things schedule you a photo shoot you know, doing these things is what allows you to pour into yourself. There's all these aspects of ourselves that we sometimes forget about. And so wake them back up and say, hey, I haven't forgot about you. I'm going to come back and revisit. I want you all to know that people can be single by choice. It is not a death sentence to be single. It doesn't mean that you're unworthy or undesirable. Your worth is not dictated by you being in a romantic relationship. Being single is about you taking care of yourself, recognizing patterns maybe that you want to change, doing things that are a best fit for you at this point in your life, nurturing that person inside you that's like, hey, we want to have some fun. We want to be spontaneous. We want to go and do some things that maybe are a little bit uncomfortable for us, but would be good for us to do. This is about you recognizing your worth and your value as a person without anyone else having to affirm that. 
Okay, so your most important relationship is your relationship with yourself. Be well.